Good morning and welcome to Design Day 2011 in the Department of Biomedical Engineering. First up, I'd like to introduce Dr. Ed Miller, our first welcome talk. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm pleased to be here, and thank you very much for joining us. Uh, today, um, we have quite an impressive audience here. These include clinicians and students. We also have faculty, staff, industry guests, alumni, parents, and other visitors. The CBIT has been uh, quite a very successful program. I couldn't tell you how pleased I am. I was talking to Bob Allen a few minutes ago. It started in 2006 and came, came over here in 2008. And the ability to bring our engineering students together with clinicians to work on devices and projects that have great potential for clinical work, I think, is uh, really what this is all about. Until recently, none of us who entered medicine or science this, in this modern era thought we'd be tapping into our business and marketing acume. <coughs> I assure you that during my medical school days, a technology transfer was not a hot, hot topic. I think we just had light bulbs invented when I went to medical school. But today it's the frontier in the biomedical engineering department and CBIT allows students to be involved in this important area of research from the very start, from their freshman year. And I believe that we at Hopkins have already made great strides. And most importantly, we've come to a crucial mutual understanding of why this matters. The most fundamental reason is that commercialization is the best way to turn the fruits of our bench research into enormous public benefits. Having agreed on this, we have spent the past several years identifying our niche in a crowded field of academic institutions competing in this previously unfamiliar area of venture capitalists and biomedical in industrialists. And I think we have made a progress. At Johns Hopkins, we have always had superb investigators, and now we have faculty and students eager to translate their discoveries into use. In the past several years, the collaboration between the Johns Hopkins Medicine and the School of Engineering have increased dramatically. I uh, was with the uh, advisory panel of NICS uh, on Friday, and it's impressive of how the interactions, as we started to look at the number of interactions we have between the School of Engineering and Johns Hopkins Medicine, it really is impressive and it can, just continues to grow. CBIT is a best example of where our academic programs are fostering technology commercialization and collaboration with great success. Harnessing the intellectual powers of, the, of our school's outstanding students and faculty and its close ties with the Johns Hopkins Hospital and Industry, CBIT allows the BME department to double the number of students design project it takes on each year, enhance students' hands-on learning experiences, and encourages the culture of entrepreneurship and collaboration and ultimately improve human health. Also incorporated into the BME uh, uh, design curriculum is a focus on technology commercialization. Members of the student design teams interact with clinical advisors and corporate sponsors and have experience to promote the development of their leadership, communications, and marketing skills, thus helping to ensure our graduates' professional success. I would like to thank all of the clinicians who participate in this program for their time and support for the students. Without this partnership, the program would not be able to reach the levels of success we celebrate today. I would also like to encourage those clinicians present who are not involved with the program to learn more about the outstanding work these students are doing and get involved with CBID. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to be here all day today because of uh, something that has to over in the Homewood campus, but I am sure the projects that you'll hear about are truly exciting. I've already seen some of them in some of the demonstrations I saw in the spring, so I think it's pretty neat. I'd now like to introduce Nick Jones, the Benjamin T. Rome Dean of the School of Engineering, to say a few words. Nick. Well, thank you, Ed. Um, it's my pleasure to be here and welcome you all. Also, um, unfortunately, I have the same uh, events that Ed has, so I will make my remarks and then um, have to leave. Um, there are m many people um, I should thank uh, for what has ended up 
uh, what culminates in, in today's uh, activities. Um, uh, I don't have time to do that, um, but except I will acknowledge the presence of one person um, in the audience, and that's uh, Richard Swernow, who's sitting here in the, near the front, um, for whom uh, the master's program in CBID is, is named thanks to his, uh, his support er early on. I know um, in my many conversations with Richard, I know he likes to support things that perhaps wouldn't come to be if it weren't for some upfront support. Um, and I think uh, this was uh, one, Richard, that we can probably declare victory on, that uh, um, it's a, a fabulous program, as you will hear uh, today. This program, um, the uh, re results of which you, from which you'll be hearing about uh, during the day, really highlights, I think, uh, as Ed said, the essence uh, that makes Hopkins what it is today. This program is about what the Whiting School and the School of Medicine are all about. It's what we do. We have remarkable students uh, and faculty who come to Hopkins just to participate in these types of programs, and they can. Um, I can share with you that uh, just last week, at the beginning of last week, we got the final confirmation on the accepted students uh, who will be joining us as freshmen uh, next academic year. Um, the Whiting School uh, had a target of bringing in 415 students. Um, depending on your perspective, like whether you're responsible for, whether you're the dean or whether you're uh, responsible for scheduling rooms, uh, we way over yielded uh, on that, that target. And as of last Monday, we had 483 uh, young men and women who have indicated that they wanted to uh, come and study engineering at Hopkins. Um, that number will probably come down a little bit over the, over the summer, but we will still well exceed our, our target. There are many reasons for this, I believe, not the least of which is students who look at programs like this and get really excited about the prospect and, and want to be part of it, whether it's part of biomedical engineering or part of mechanical engineering or some of our uh, other engineering de departments. So the success that we see in programs like this really translates itself into um, uh, the desirability of the Whiting School uh, for many students who previously may not have been interested at all. One of the things um, that is most exciting and gratifying for me as dean is, is, of course, programs like this enable students to take knowledge gained in the classroom and apply them toward uh, re solving real-world uh, uh, problems. For example, since 2009, there have been 11 startups that have come out of the CBID program, both at the undergraduate and, and master's level. Uh, Japigo, a partner um, with uh, CBID, has won a, a US AID grant for the development of Proteinuria Test, one of our graduate uh, current student projects, a global health project. <coughs> the uh, participation of our students now in these international opportunities um, are really also exciting, I think, and um, that's part of the reason why I was willing as dean to, to uh, support these, these efforts. Um, it adds another layer of fostering creativity uh, beyond what we have already because of the aggressive um, and unusual constraints that uh, one encounters in the developing world. So I think this um, addition to the program that we've just introduced over the past year is really very, very um, e exciting. Um, at the end of the day, I should also just speak to the success. I alluded to that already. Um, this program really has been a phenomenal success. This year's master's teams have won $140,000 in outside uh, funding and business plan competition awards, including first place at Harvard, first place at Rice, two NCAA grants. CBID teams have also been featured in articles in Time Magazine, Popular Science, US News, and on ABC News. Um, and last year, an undergraduate team won the NCAA BME Idea Award. So I think you will see today, in the, as you listen to the presentations, why it is um, that, that we are getting this level of recognition. I should add just a few more uh, comments before I close. Um, what you see happening with this program, I think, is indicative of a new culture that exists uh, within the university and, and certainly within the School of Engineering. Uh, Ed mentioned this a few moments ago. 
Um, and that is a, an interest in and, and a commitment to technology transfer. Um, and I think the Whiting School is really uh, up there front and center with this, um, driven in part by some of the activities uh, that, that are going on in this program. For example, uh, this current year, as of mid-year, uh, the Whiting School is responsible for about 5% of the research expenditures of the university, but 20% of the invention disclosures. So this is really an, a, a very important metric uh, for us that indicates a, a significant change that we've seen uh, happen over the last, last several years. Um, we have, uh, I would say, a renewed emphasis on the importance of design. Design is a, has always been an integral part of the engineering process. Uh, it's easy for engineering schools to drift away from the embracing of design and focus more just on the science uh, aspects. But I think in the Whiting School, there really is a culture uh, of, of uh, design that, that is powerful and getting stronger, and more and more of our departments are uh, em embracing this uh, more strongly than, than before. I think the next decade um, is going to take the collaboration between engineering and medicine, to which Ed uh, referred, uh, to, to a new level. Uh, we will see collaborations that uh, we could never have even dreamed of even a few, few years ago. Um, and this is going to be necessary as medicine becomes more of an information science driven discipline, for example. There's going to be a whole host of challenges out there as we, we bring these new uh, capabilities uh, basically to, to the bedside. I believe that Hopkins uh, is going to be at the frontier of this effort even more than we have before, and programs like, uh, like CBID and our, our terrific biomedical engineering department will, be, uh, will, will also make us uh, front and center. So um, congratulations to all the teams for having gotten this far. Um, thank you to all of the uh, guests for, for being here. I'm sure it's gonna be a fabulous day. Um, believe me, and I can probably speak for Ed as well, would actually rather sit here and listen to these and go to the meeting that we're going to, right? <laughs> pretty much um, <laughs> in spades, right. Uh, but unfortunately, um, we, we need to leave. So um, again, congratulations. Uh, welcome to the guests and, and have a fabulous day. I'm sure you will. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dean Miller, Dean Jones. I'd like to give you a brief overview of, of CIBID before we go on to the talks. CIBID is really about two things. It's really about the students you'll be hearing from today, and it's really about the solutions, the healthcare solutions that they develop. There are plenty of institutions that do one or the other, but CIBID's really about both. We aim to educate and develop the next generations of leaders in healthcare innovation, and to create and do some of the early stage development of healthcare solutions that will have a transformational impact on human health around the world. It's the ethos of CIBID that students learn best when they're working on real world projects with practitioners from the real world. And the measure of our success at CIBID is the positive impact that these students you'll hear from today and the technologies that they have developed will have on the quality and accessibility of healthcare. This mission is accomplished through the hard work of the people you see on the screen here, plus a large network of clinicians and faculty members and administrators across the university. And first and foremost are the top three educators because that's the number one mission of our center. And I'd like to especially call out uh, Professor Larry Ehrenheim, Professor Robert Allen, and Professor uh, Shomo Acharya as the people who have the most impact on the educational curriculum here at CIBID. In addition, the center cannot function without the, the, the excellent administrative support of Mary Beth Kammer and Sarah Debbie. Thank you very much for your, your tireless uh, contribution to the program, all of you throughout the year. And of course, clinical interaction is central to the, the, the mission of CIBID, and we're very honored to have as our clinical director, Jay Khanna. So you heard from the two deans and their commitment to the program. It's, it, these are essential co constituents of a successful med tech innovation program is having a very strong engineering depth and a strong clinical depth. And CIBID brings together and has equal footing in both the School of Engineering and the School of Medicine. 
But even that's not sufficient. We also bring in a large network of ex-outside partners who are doing this kind of work in the real world. People from Johnson & Johnson, we're honored to have their support, and Japigo as, a, as a, a partner in helping us understand what really will work in the, in, in, globally. Medtronic, BD, Hogan Lovells, Wilson Sonsini, Polaris, and the FDA. These are just some of the major partners that we have developed over the years. And I think this provides CIBID the opportunity for world leadership in medtech education, innovation, and early stage development. Our approach has been not bed, bench to bedside, but rather bedside to bench to bedside. Everything we do starts and goes back in an iterative fashion to where the magic happens, where the clinicians are helping the patients, or in the field where Japigo's clinicians are helping um, uh, patients worldwide. CIVID brings together two synergistic programs, an undergraduate program and a graduate program, and you'll be hearing from both of them today. The undergraduate program, as, as Dean Jones mentioned, started over a decade ago, with the hard work of, of Professor Art Shukas and Bob Allen, and, uh, and it made design central to the education in the biomedical engineering department. And every year, over 100 students are touched by this program. A few years ago, a master's program was also launched, and it's a one-year degree program, and you'll be hearing from those students as well, and we're extremely proud of that program. The students form three teams, and they do projects both in first world type med tech innovation, and this year they've also been called on to go above and beyond and to develop a global health innovation as well. In addition, this year we've launched our global health innovation program, and the part of the motivation for this were, was that students have a tremendous amount of passion for improving health worldwide and applying their innovative skills to really helping patients around the world. In addition, we felt we would be remiss if we claimed to be training leaders in, in this field that they, would, they really need to know how to innovate, not just for the best hospitals in the world like Johns Hopkins Medicine, but also for some of the most resource-constrained environments. And we feel this is important both for their success and for American competitiveness in this industry. These are some of the results just in three years. These are some of the logos of some of the companies that have been spun out or will be spun out over the next few weeks from the CIBID program. I'd particularly like to call out uh, ServoCheck, which is one of our companies from last year which is being incubated in town. I think Karen is here, the CEO. Hi, Karen. Feel free to talk to her about her company and she's actively seeking investment. And these are some of the companies that will be launched this year by our present CIBIT teams. Exciting technologies. We've also, in addition, our global health program is not just about uh, traditional global health delivery in, in resource-constrained environments. We, we insist the students articulate and think a lot about how they can make their innovations commercially sustainable. And these are some examples you'll be hearing more about today. So really, the CIBIT model of leadership is about combining competence, and confidence and students that we've selected and the, for a demonstration of their passion for healing through innovation. So at last, I'd like to thank the individuals and the corporations who really made this program possible, especially uh, Richard Swarnow, thank you very much for your support. Uh, the master's program here is named after, after that uh, donation. Thank you so much. Johnson & Johnson has been a, a major supporter of the program, and all of these partners make it possible for these students to have this wonderful experience. So on behalf of CIBID, faculty, our clinicians, and our students, and the future patients who will be impacted by all this innovation in the future, thank you all very much for your support. Now I'd like to introduce Dr. Robert Allen, who will talk about the undergraduate program. Thank you, Youssef. As usual, when Youssef speaks, I usually have an amendment or two. Um, so I'm going to tell you for next year that instead of 10 teams, we're going with 12. And one of the aspects that makes our program um, succeed as it does is that we continually evolve and we are willing to change and take risks about the future. But I'm indeed privileged and pleased to stand before you to begin this day presenting design achievements of our students. Before we start though, I'd like to say a few words about, specifically about the undergraduate program. This program started in 1998 by Art Shukas 
whose name you've heard already, Professor of Biomedical Engineering, who had a vision to introduce freshmen to biomedical engineering by empowering seniors to teach them, um, to guide them, in, uh, and 10 of them, in projects that included measuring heart rate while riding on a roller coaster, which all freshmen continue to do today. Since those 22 students inaugurated the program, the program has evolved in what it is today. I have been privileged to have taught and worked with over 1,000 students who have experienced the undergraduate design teams and over 100 students who have served um, as team leaders, three of which, and, three, and the same number of projects, three of which you'll hear about shortly this morning. All 10 teams this year will be presenting their posters during lunch, and you'll get a chance to meet them as well. The, the original vision of the program by empowering students, senior students and sometimes junior students, to remain as team leaders has remained intact and has been a cornerstone of the program. And our success has been due in large part to them. We've had 10 projects this year and 13 team leaders. And I'd like to take a moment just to recognize them. And so for the current team leaders, I'll, all, I'll ask all of you to stand up. Go ahead, don't be shy, stand up. All of you, 13, let's count. <laughs> and there they are. I think a round of applause is due to them for their, for their success. For next year, we have already selected teams, and as I indicated, we have 12 teams and 14 leaders. And you'll get to meet them also during the lunch break, and um, because of that, I'd like to introduce each one, one by one, and as I do, I ask you to stand and remain standing until all of you stand. One, Emmeline Connor, is abroad this year on her semester abroad, and she cannot be here. The 2011 and 2012 uh, team leaders are Marie Bacanda. Oh, hold on, hold your applause until the end, please. Thank you. Gil Barros. I think he's in class. Samri, Samri Basha. Rohat Dasgupta. Stephanie D'Souza. Stephen Dria, Nishant Ganesh Kumar, John Kim, Vikram Rajan, Frank Yao, QX Yi, Noah Young, and Zahal Zahid. We look forward to working with you next year and thank you. The excellence and the continuity of this program rest in large part on your shoulders. We hope that they're broad enough to do so. And so we begin. As indicated in the program, the first team to present this morning is the skin biopsy team. And I'll ask them to come up and give their presentation. I believe Danielle Dorfman, one of the team leaders, will be presenting this morning. 